What if I told you that for most of human history, people didn't think inside their own heads? Who are you? Meaning what? I mean, literally, no inner voice, no introspection, no self as we know it. Instead, the mind spoke as something outside of you, you a commanding voice, obey. a god, a king, a spirit. Okay, now that's intriguing. This is the idea behind Julian Jaynes's theory of the bicameral mind. And if he's even partly right, then the way consciousness emerged was far stranger and far more dramatic than we usually imagine. Yeah, this is a fun one. Yeah, so Jaynes proposed this pretty radical idea that early humans didn't experience consciousness the way we do today. They lacked this sense of an inner self and were guided by auditory hallucinations that they perceived as like divine command. So, they weren't having conversations with themselves in their heads like we do now. Not in the same way. No. Wow. Yeah, so imagine a world where people didn't have that internal monologue, that sense of introspection. Instead, their thoughts and impulses would be experienced as like voices from outside themselves. So they'd basically hear a god telling them what to do instead of thinking it through on their own. Exactly, yeah. And Jane's argued that this bicameral mind was actually quite functional for like early societies. So, you know, imagine a group of hunters facing like a dangerous predator. Instead of each individual having to think through the situation and come up with a plan, they would hear the voice of their leader or a god instructing them what to do. And it allowed for like quick, coordinated action in situations where hesitation could be deadly. That makes sense from like a survival perspective. But what happened? Why don't we experience consciousness that way anymore? That's the big question. So, Jane's believe that you know, around 3,000 years ago, this bicameral mind began to break down and individual consciousness as we know it emerged. And this wasn't like a sudden thing. It was driven by a lot of factors, um, things like the rise of complex societies, the development of writing, the increasing need for like individual decision making. So the world was getting more complicated and people needed more uh, more nuance in their decision making. Yeah, they needed to be able to think for themselves more. And as that inner voice, that sense of self developed, those like divine voices began to fade. Imagine what a profound shift that must have been. It's like losing your internal compass. Yeah, it's like, how do you even orient yourself in the world without that? That must have been terrifying. So what did people do? Well, Jaynes argues that we sought to fill that void, that lack of that external voice, with new forms of storytelling, myth-making, and religious beliefs. It's as though we needed to create external systems of meaning and authority to replace the internal guidance that we had lost. So instead of hearing the voice of God directly, they started writing down sacred texts and building temples. Exactly. So those external structures kind of helped us to cope with the loss of those inner voices and provided a new framework for understanding the world. I mean, this is all very theoretical, but it's pretty mind-blowing to think about, you know. It's kind of hard to imagine, isn't it? That our ancestors experienced consciousness so differently. Right. A whole world guided not by reflection, but by command. And then... We dreamed. We dreamed of the hunt of the stars, of the spirits in the trees. We painted on cave walls not to survive, but to remember, to feel, to become something more. That gives me chills. Yeah, it was the beginning of something else, something inward. And those echoes still live in us today. Yeah, so do you think there are any like remnants of the bicameral mind present in us today? That's an interesting question. Have you ever had like a sudden urge to do something like a gut feeling that seemed to come out of nowhere? Sure. Perhaps those are echoes of those ancient voices, whispers from our evolutionary past. 